So I had an epiphany. For you experienced runners out there, this might be kind of obvious, but sometimes it's super important to run your workout based off feeling or based off of effort and not based off of time or pace. say I'm sorry for haphazardly uploading the last week. I know I missed a few days kind of organizing things over here on my end and I thought of a fun way I could still do daily uploads um, but if I don't have a lot of time I could make little one minute nuggets of value to give which is where the 60 second split idea came up with. If you haven't seen I'll link it right here. So I was doing a workout on Friday I was doing a 20 minute tempo run. Well I wanted to go out at six minute pace because that's my tempo pace. And I couldn't, I couldn't do it and stay, and stay in the effort intensity that I wanted to stay in. I could run six minute pace, but it didn't feel, but it didn't feel like 80% effort. It felt, it felt hard and, and I didn't really think about it, I didn't really realize it, but, but there's a ton of factors that influence how you feel and how you're going to run on any given day. The particular factor on that day, on this Friday, is the weather, man. And it's my understanding that heat and humidity are one, are one way to measure that, but apparently dew point is like the way to do it. And every day in Taipei, the dew point here is about... 76 degrees which according to this chart means that it's unbearable to run in <laughs> but that's just the way it is every day here for four months out of the year it's been a year since i run in these conditions and the unfortunate realization is that i can't really run my workouts based on pace anymore i really have to run it based on effort and feeling because the heat the humidity excessive sweating really affects your performance so much that i might be running 20 percent slower than normal which kind of sucks because well, one way you can judge if you're if you're increasing in fitness or not is by your times and how your times kind of gradually drop throughout your workouts throughout the months, how you respond to the training. I don't I don't know if that'd be a good metric for me to judge myself based on. Obviously, race times are the ultimate way to judge. So my epiphany so I was in the middle of my tempo run and I kept like trying to break it down I was like, okay I'll do 20 minutes of tempo pace and the first mile felt miserable so I was like well I'll do one mile of tempo pace one at break then three miles at tempo pace and then I'm into my second mile I'm like man this sucks I don't feel smooth I don't feel good I don't feel sexy you know it's not it's not an easy effort so right about at the end of that second mile I just forgot about my watch I didn't look the pace and I kind of like closed my eyes for a second and I ran purely off of effort. It just mentally felt better. I didn't feel accountable to a pace. I didn't feel guilty about not hitting the pace. I know what tempo pace is supposed to feel like and that's kinda, that's what I aim for. And something really cool happened. So not keeping track of my pace, I started to feel smoother. My legs started to move much more relaxed, much more fluid. And I was, the, I was much less tense. And I finished the run feeling great. I felt strong and I felt powerful and I felt like it was productive. I was running significantly faster than I normally do on an easy day like this. I wasn't quite running the pace I was supposed to, but I think the effort was spot on. And when I checked my watch at the end, I think I was running 630 miles. So I was running a bit slower than normal. But, I mean look, that's 34 degrees Celsius. That's like 90 Fahrenheit. Humidity is like 70%, dew point's like 76. These are not optimal conditions for running fast. And the epiphany I had was that I had to check my ego and say, hey Jake, it's BS. There's no pace you're supposed to be running. It's, it's running, like yeah, it's a science, but it's also a bit of an art and it's like, you cannot always have something super specific like that. So I took you guys to the track the other day. I don't always go to the track, to be honest, because when you go to the track, it's, it's a very specific, precise, measured workout. I mean, down to the meter, down to the second. And if you're not feeling mentally up for it, it can kind of kill your confidence a little bit. I remember seeing a video with Bernard Lagarde years ago so him and his coach and world-class runner world-class track athlete and at that point in time he only ran on the track he didn't do road running but he said that most of his training was done on the grass outdoors not on a measured kind of surface and it just mentally helped him train better mentally helped him perform better and that's why i always tell people i don't like training in the track in the track itself i like doing something like this because it gives me the same and weather is just one aspect, it's just one thing that can affect your running on any given day. We've got tons of life stresses. You know, not every runner is a pro runner who lives in this amazing bubble of just training 
eat, sleep, training, surrounded by people who do the same and who cultivate this awesome world for themselves. Not everyone has that reality. You know, you could be a collegiate runner who's like half in that world and then half in the world of an actual student where you have grades and tests and exams and responsibilities. And oh, hey, by the way, I have to have a job in two years. Um, how am I gonna make money? My girlfriend hates me, my boyfriend hates me, whatever it might be, you know? You could be a professional and you're like, dude, I work 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week, and then I have to go out when I go running for my fun time. I have to like hit the specific pace exactly, otherwise, my whole day's crap and I'm a crap runner. Look, I I totally empathize. And I'm just telling you guys, from me, from me to you, it doesn't matter how fast you get, how good you get, how long you've been running. One of my old friends, she was a world-class 800 meter runner. We had discussions about this. Like you have to, like you're training your body and so you have to pay attention to how your body feels. And your mind controls your body. So when you go out there for your workout, for your run, just pay attention, just listen to it. Don't feel guilty about how you're feeling in any one day. It could be in the middle of a race and it could be going terribly. The first half of my marathon in December went horribly. But as I was running like 40 seconds per mile slower than my goal race pace in the middle of my race, I wasn't, I wasn't like mad about it, I wasn't, guilty, I wasn't hating myself, I was just like, hey man, that's how my body's responding at this moment on this day. Sure enough, I don't know, 16, 17 miles into it, my body started feeling amazing. I started running better, and I got quicker and quicker and quicker. And I split my last 5K, like, like, a, like a full minute per mile faster than my actual goal race pace. So, I ran a bad race, but I didn't let the guilty thoughts, the negative thoughts kind of creep in and really affect me as much as they could have. That was my epiphany that came from my workout the other day. Just wanted to share with you guys, always focus on the positive. Don't let the negative thoughts pervade or invade and affect your performance. All you can do is your best, and uh, sometimes it's faster or slower than whatever you intended, you know? Training can be a science, but I think running can be an art. So, I don't know, just think about, think about that and uh, hopefully it helps you guys if you're in some kind of rut, whether you're injured or you're having a streak of slower runs or slower performances or something. All right, thanks so much you guys and uh, check back tomorrow.